Welcome to the Contemplative Life. Three pastors, friends, and spiritual companions help us explore spirituality through a contemplative lens. I'm Christina Roberts. I'm Chris Roberts. I'm Christina Kaiser. We're glad you joined us. Hello, it is great to be with you. Today we are talking about dreams as a spiritual practice. And when this episode airs, we will have finished both the Christmas and Epiphany season in church calendars. And both of these stories talk about dreams. You know, there's the famous story where Joseph has a dream from the angel talking about the Christ child. And then the Magi had a dream warning them to go a different route because of King Herod. And I think sometimes in our Christian faith tradition, we can overlook, oh yeah, that's kind of a side comment about dreams, but dreams appear quite a bit in the scriptures. You know, of course, there's the well-known story of Joseph and his dreams in the Old Testament, but it's not only Joseph's dreams. Pharaoh had dreams that were also part of the story. And then the cup baker, I'm sorry, the cup bearer and the baker also had dreams. And so we see that dreams span across socioeconomic lines. It doesn't matter what your job or vocation is. Dreams is part of that. Um, They span across cultures. There seems to be something about the ability to interpret dreams. So also an Old Testament person that we can note is Daniel, who had an ability to interpret dreams. And so today we wanted to talk about dreams, like why dreams matter and how dreams can actually be a spiritual practice. And I think oftentimes when we think about dreams, it's like, well, I don't have dreams or I don't remember my dreams. And I think that can certainly be true, right? That's kind of our normal default. And yet dreams are something that everybody, all humans experience. And I think sometimes just acknowledging, okay, I do dream. What does it mean to pay attention to my dreams and how can dreams be a spiritual practice? So what do we think about dreams today? Yeah. I love that you're bringing up dreams and even the characters and these stories that you mentioned. And I think one of the interesting things that's happened to me as I've started to pay attention to dreams as a spiritual practice, uh, I personally didn't start having dreams that caused me to pay attention to dreams. Uh, I was doing um, a spiritual direction school and I had to get seekers uh, for this school to sort of practice my listening skills. And one of my seekers brought a dream to a, a year long experience of listening. And I think I began to notice like every time we would get together, uh, a reference towards the dream would come up in this person's life. And so I then started to pay attention to my, my own dreams. I had another friend that started seeing a Jungian analyst who started discussing his dreams. And so I kind of had the classic outlook towards dreams that I think a lot of people have. I don't really remember a lot of my dreams, or should I say, I didn't remember a lot of my dreams. And so I didn't really pay attention to them. And uh, so like a practice that I've had, uh, because this is coming up in all these different uh, characters and relationships that are surrounding me, uh, I started putting a journal and pen by my bed. And I had this intention to sort of whenever I would dream, no matter what time I would just like jot down a little something. And uh, that has really helped me uh, pay attention to dreams And I think just an awareness that a lot of people have dreams and the symbolism is important for their lives. And so uh, that's what comes up to me as you talk about dreams and the importance of dreams and a a sort of a practice. Yeah. Maybe I'll just piggyback off of that, Chris. I think, you know, I also have a practice of when I wake up and if I remember parts of my dream, I'll just get my notes out on my phone and voice to text it or whatever. And I've given myself the permission that I think another barrier is, well, I don't remember all of, I just remember like this one part of my dream. And I think for me, giving myself permission that even if I only remember this person was in my dream or I was in this location, I will write that down. And I don't feel the pressure to have to like, remember all of my dream or only if I remember 25% of my dream. And I'm noticing over time, as I've done that practice, when I go back over my notes, it's like, wow, I've dreamed like 10 different times that I'm in this one location. There's probably something there. What does this location mean? And I might look it up in a, in a dream dictionary or something like that. And so I think for me, lowering the bar 
of paying attention to dreams as a spiritual practice. I don't have to have some like massive dream journal where I'm like sketching out all my dreams and all the details, but it's like these little things, or maybe, you know, um, again, a, a person that's repetitive in my dream, paying attention to those themes. So yeah, I, I would agree with what you're saying. Maybe just another side note. I, one of the, the things that I've also noticed, uh, and I'll bounce this to you, Christina Kaiser, but the intention to pay attention to your dreams, I think it makes your awareness grow. And so where you might have said, I don't really remember my dreams. I think if you set an, an intention to remember your dreams and write them down, you actually do dream a lot and you start to notice it more and pay attention to it. So I, I, th I think that's important to note as well. For sure. And I think it's interesting. Richard Rohr was talking about this in one of his daily meditations too. Not specifically dreams though, just the notions of spiritual practices at all uh, that pretty much anything we do is either setting something in stone in our lives or we're, you know, creating a new thing in our lives. And so even when we think, oh, I'm not really practicing, in point of fact, anything that we're doing regularly is a practice. The question is, is it a spiritual practice or are we adding a spiritual intention to it? And so I think the same seems to be true with our dreams. And so it makes sense that our, our awareness seems to grow over time if we give it a little bit of, of credence. And, and it's funny, I've even noted, there's things that I know to be true of my dreams, like, Oh, I often see a house with many rooms or like secret rooms type thing. Uh, but my husband has different things that he notices about my dreams. Like you're always being chased. And I was like, no, I'm not. And <laughs> so then I had to go back and, and or, or start noticing from this point forward, because that's probably more realistic. It's hard to remember something if you don't write it down. But um, is that true? Do I always feel like I'm running away from something, which would also be a meaningful thing to process? <laughs> yeah. And you bring up an interesting point, too. I think, you know, kind of going back to the Bible, there's a story in the Old Testament where Gideon was overhearing two friends talking about their dreams. And so I think sometimes these dreams might stick with us. And so we want to bring it up in maybe a spiritual companioning session or just with a spouse or a friend, like, Hey, I had this really weird dream last night and here it is. And not even that you necessarily have to, again, have some profound thing, but sometimes another person, like I really appreciate sharing with another person and they might recognize, Oh, like, that's interesting. I might think that the bowling alley means one thing. And this person wonders if the bowling alley means something else. And it can kind of nuance and tease that out a little bit. And so I think that there's something about the privateness of these are my dreams that maybe I'm jotting down in my journal and I just want to reflect on them myself. But then sometimes there seems to be invitation to open that up to whatever degree to someone that has a compassionate listening ear towards us. Yeah. I like that. Bringing, bringing something out sort of in the open to someone else has a different effect than us sort of studying our own dreams. I think, you know, I recall a significant dream that sort of altered my life drastically was this dream where I had, I had a specific set of actions like a judgment towards a person. And then uh, I got to have the dream again. And instead of being a dream of judgment, uh, I had hospitality. So I, I got to do the dream differently. And I think I brought it up to my spiritual director and the things that they noticed in the dream, I don't think that I would have paid attention to, but it was in the retelling of my dream that I was able to, to hear from a different perspective. And, and that's what really altered the course of my life, it brought up the hospitality thing. Uh, I, I didn't notice that. And hospitality is something that's really important to me in my life. And as a family, you know, we try to offer hospitality as much as possible. And so I really like what you're saying about bringing things out can cause something different to happen than sort of just self-reflection. Yeah, I think the dwelling can really help us to solidify things. Uh, so it's this holy pause in a way. So even uh, and actually, you would find this on episode 15, but when we sat and did that kind of telling of my dream, and really, I feel like my my long-term memory of what happened there, it, it feels like, and what is God saying, and what is God saying? Like, just, it feels like one question. There were probably many more, but like, time passes, what do you remember? Uh, and what I remember is, in getting still, who I thought I was changed. Uh, just by getting still suddenly like I switched roles in asking that question and instead of the dream being 
odd and confusing it was assuring and meaningful and and showed it really opened up how god had been available to me for a long period of time uh, and then became you know some of the law the larger messages of that dream have similar to what you're saying become long-term messages for me yeah and i think that there are different aspects of our dreams right so some dreams are just like a working out of what's happening in our waking hours and so maybe we just watched a movie and then that comes up in our thing and we're all of a sudden in the movie scene right and it's just sort of like our our own way of kind of decluttering the day and getting all of that stuff out from our brain. Um, but I do think you're right that sometimes dreams can be very validating. Maybe they can be affirming something in our lives. Sometimes I think they can be even like um, directional or informative. So um, again, going back to um, Paul in the New Testament, when he was, they were trying to figure out where to go on their journey. And he had a dream in the night where somebody from Macedonia was inviting him to come to him. And so that's a very pronounced, I am seeking direction. Where do I go? And something shows up in my dream. I'm paying attention to that. And then I'm sure he talked to his companions and they kind of discern together, you know, again, not just because something shows up in the dream doesn't mean that now I'm going to alter the course of my life, but dreams supplemented with consolation, desolation, wisdom, and a multitude of counselors, like all the different practices that we do. This is one aspect in a holistic approach to our spiritual lives. And I think dreams can be, um, creative, informative, all of the different things that we're naming today. I think that's important to, um, to recognize. And also that there is a symbolism to dreams that I think we can hear something differently when there's a, it's coming through a symbol versus a literal thing that we're in our waking hours, trying to figure something out when it comes in a different form in a dream, it's like, huh, I can hear or see that a little bit differently. Yeah. And I think I just want to name that in our, in our Western society, I think for someone to change the course of their life because of a dream that they had, most people would say that's absurd. <laughs> you know, we need hard, cold facts and data to make discernments in our life. And uh, I don't think, I think people need permission to, to see dreams as a discerning point in their life. And in the Western world, particularly like, I, I think it's it's an oddity that somebody would pay attention to a dream. I, you know, I think people just need permission to say, you know, dreams might have more significance than we give them credit for or credence for in our society. And I also think like so much of it will seem like common sense to you. Like you probably wanted that. You probably, you know, needed just a little bit of assurance or something along those lines. Like, I know that I need to make this change and I continue to work this out even when I sleep type thing. Um, so I, I totally see what you're saying. And some of it's probably gonna feel so natural because I think back to Christina's point too, that notion of this is in conjunction with all these other spiritual practices that we're engaging in. So, yeah. Yeah, and I have the same mutual friend as Chris who is really into the Jungian aspect of, of dreams. And uh, he meets with a Jungian a analysis or analyst, I guess is what they're called. And I remember him saying like, I look forward to going to bed every night because I can't wait to see what I'm going to dream. And he's so expectant of what are my dreams going to reveal? And it's been just this real healing journey in our friend who, you know, I don't think he shares the same Christian faith that we do. It comes from a different angle of how he approaches um God, the universe, whatever, but dreams have been a source of real healing and wholeness in his life. And so there's such a richness that I hope we can encourage everyone to tap into. Thanks for such a generative conversation. Now we're going to transition to the part of our podcast where we talk about what we are into this week. What are we into? I know this is going to seem super ordinary, but I am into making lists. <laughs> there was just so much to get done. So oftentimes I can keep a running list in my head and that works for me, but there was enough that I, I felt like I was in a making a list and checking it twice type thing. And so I pulled out my pink pen and am now getting to check things off. And that is my grand thing these days. <laughs> nice. Well, it is uh, the Advent season, New Year's, and I am really into eggnog. Uh, I love eggnog. In fact, me and my uh, oldest child uh, fight over the dregs of eggnog. And um, I think 
one of the things that I love about eggnog is it comes in so many different flavors and thicknesses. And I'm personally the thicker, the better type what I really enjoy uh, as an eggnog connoisseur. I've really enjoyed this uh, season partaking of eggnog. I've put some in my coffee. I drink it straight. Any way I can have eggnog, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to go for it. That is true. You love eggnog. <laughs> well, I will stick with the drink theme and I am into Izzy sparkling juices and um, I have loved Izzy Sparkling Juices, but recently we had um, just this lovely, there's a nonprofit in our community, Madison, and they did this thing called Spread Good Cheer, where you could sponsor someone and um, surprise them with a favorite drink and a treat, and they would go deliver it to someone. And so someone very generously and sweetly sponsored me. And um, so I got a text, hey, you were chosen for the Spread the Cheer. What's your favorite drink? I'll drop it off. And so um, I didn't want a hot drink because I thought by the time it gets here, it will be kind of lukewarm. So I was like, ooh, I would love some Clementine Izzy's. And so she bought me a four pack and I've been enjoying that and remembering like, I love these and I don't have to wait to the summer to drink them. Like I can delight in my Clementine Izzy's or pomegranate is also good. I just love all the Izzy's. So um, that is what I am into this week. There's one that she's been leaving laying around that I'm super, if she doesn't drink it soon, I'm going to snatch it up. There will be some conflict if that happens. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed listening to the podcast, we invite you to check out our bi-weekly newsletter. You can find a link in the show note or subscribe at thecontemplativelife.net. Until next time, make it a great week. Thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm.